So this is the self-development with tactics. Book. So, this one's gonna be about sports and money basically as well, because more after that, or more for that, in terms of that, after the intro. I just realized that I've forgotten to use my blankets, and as you can hear, the audio is just uh, different, and you can just especially hear that right after I've placed my blanket. Audio is changing tremendously, tremendously in uh, the good way, or just to the good of the spectrum. But yeah, with that being said, hello, welcome back to the next episode of the Self-Development with Tactics fucking podcast. And I'm pumped, I'm pumped to going for this, or to going through this, and it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a good episode, I at least hope. Um, but yeah, if you want to listen to this episode, if you want to listen to this episode as it would be an audiobook, then please check out the links in the description because there should be the link to the podcast because this actually is a podcast. So this uh, YouTube video that you're just seeing right now is basically like the video for and or to the podcast. So it's not really like the podcast because the podcast is actually the audio version of it. But yeah, you know, if you actually want to listen to this, as a podcast, please check out the links in the description. There should be a link to the site where you could also choose where to watch and or to listen the podcast on because I am on Apple Podcast, it is on Google Podcast, it is on Stitcher, it is on Castbox, it is hopefully everywhere and also in the place where you're listening to your podcasts normally, you know, so that there is no kind of barrier between you and listening to the episode just because there's a, another platform you have to be on. But yeah, I guess... The thing is, most people are listening to podcasts on Apple Podcast. I'm also on there. And also just by my analytics, I've also seen that most people are indeed listening to podcasts and also my podcast on Apple Podcast and on iPhones, essentially. But yeah, and this shouldn't be what it is all about this episode, but it should be about sports, you know. And this is something that a lot of people are just angry of and something that they are not really kind of understanding maybe as well. But the thing is, and this is also kind of the reason why I'm willing to talk about that, athletes are earning quite a lot. And um, also very young athletes, they're earning really a lot. And is it actually something that's bad? If it is something that's good? I would say it is just what it is, isn't it? Because the thing is, I mean, like, they are earning a lot because people are watching the sports. They are earning a lot because the industry lets them earn a lot. And I mean, like, if you all, like, if a factory worker would just be kind of famous, if people would watch factories and whatnot, they would also earn more. You know, it's just because the industry and the culture and the public and the people are just watching sports and sports is just a big part of culture, a big part of our society and whatnot. Therefore, sports and or athletes just earn a lot. And the whole sports community and or those firms or companies and or the, uh, the clubs themselves actually essentially as well, they are also having a lot of money just because it is the system, just because it is what society is. Of course, besides the whole fact that there just might be some tax things going on, if you know what I mean, that uh, some people are like doing and I guess, I mean... Like, way more people are doing that than uh, we actually know, I guess. Let's actually see. Let's actually see what the article is talking about. So this article isn't really about, like, the whole problem of people just being angry at athletes that they're earning such a lot, but it is about how much money the 2019 World Series champions will earn. And I've seen it on the Make It, or so, uh, cnbc.org com site or cnbc make it site and i thought like well it is something that i maybe should be talking about you know maybe this is something that people are interested in maybe this is something that might be kind of cool to talk about and this article by the way was published or is published by kathleen elkins on friday so it's uh Today is Sunday, it's actually this Friday, or it has been this Friday, on Friday, the 25th of October 2019, 3.20 p.m. EDT by Kathleen Elkins, and there is a picture, and should I actually read kind of the text beneath the picture, like the the text that describes the picture. Yeah, maybe. So Victor Robles, number 16 of the Washington National, celebrates with his teammates after his 4-5 win over the Houston Astros in Game 1 of the 2019 World Series. And this photo is by Mike Ehrman 
from Getty Images Sport and Getty Images, essentially, because Getty Images Sports is just, I think, kind of a, a part of Getty Images. Game 3 of the 2019 World Series is set for Friday, October the 25th. The Washington Nationals, who led the Houston Astros 2-1 Best of 7 Series, needs to win two, game, two more games to clinch the title. The Astros would have to win four of the next five games. Regardless of who walks away with the coveted commissioner's trophy, both clubhouses will earn a sizable eight-figure bonus that will be divided between players, coaches and non-uniformed personnel like team chefs and security guards. Do they actually have to have their own security guards? I mean, it's, it's a part of the club, it's a part of the team. Is it actually the case? Because I don't know. I'm just most familiar with soccer. You know, I the thing is, I consciously don't say football because I, at my point of view, and th this is definitely something to debate about, like definitely. For me, it is soccer. For me, it is not football. For me, it is just soccer. Football for me is football, like the NFL, American football. This is football for me, but soccer is soccer. Like there is a really huge difference at least for me. You know, a lot of people, especially those, the British people, would, I think, at least as far as I have recognized it and as far as I have seen it, they would rather refer to it as football. But, you know, it's okay. Like, it's just a debate about how you call something. It's actually kind of stupid. But I'm most familiar with soccer and how things are there. And th there's just a lot of money in the system. And I mean, like, at my point of view, it is it is definitely fair. It is definitely fair that people are complaining about the money that is in the system, you know, that uh, not only that the players get such a lot of money or that they earn such a lot of money or that they're having such a, such a high salary, but also just the whole industry is just having such a lot of money. And it would actually be very interesting which kind of basically power they having in terms of actually economy, political power and whatnot. So the, the players themselves, they of course, they have a lot of power, you know, because uh, most of them, they are having a lot of fans. Most, most of them, they're having a lot of just a fan base and audience to, to talk to and to, to speak to. But, and, but also just the, uh, the clubs themselves, I don't know, really big clubs, they're definitely having a lot of fans just besides the players. Like, of course, you might be a fan of a player, but you're definitely going to be a fan of a club even more than a fan of a player. But, but like, there's definitely a lot of money in the system. There definitely is just really, really, really a lot of money in the system, which is something that I know people. I know people that are really into soccer and like they, they still say that this shouldn't be the case, you know, that it is just really fucked up because often then it is only about the money then you know and it's just not not really about the game any longer it's not really about just playing soccer and, and having fun and just competing with each other and competing with the other teams and seeing who is the best and whatnot it's rather because of the money it's rather just for earning even more money which is uh, something that i can totally understand that he, that people are just really pissed of that or pissed by that because yeah you know it's it's sports and it's not like business even though like somehow it is i guess Regardless of who walks away with the co- Oh, I've read that. All 10 MLB clubs- Is it MLB? Yeah. MLB clubs that make it to the postseason receive a playoff bonus. Beyond the players get the extra green in the wallet, the owners have long seen the bonus system as a way to prevent players from throwing games as part of any gambling scam. Forbes reports. In 2018, the 10 postseason teams earned a record 88.2 million in bonuses. That's called the player's pool and it changes each year based on ticket sales. It's made up of 50% of the gate res receipts or receipts, receipts, I don't know, from the wildcard games, 60% of the gate receipts from the first three games of the division series, division series, and 60% of the gate receipts from the first four games of the league championship series, and 60% of the gate receipts or receipts from the first four games of the World Series, according to the MLB. It's it's pretty interesting. Like, it's, it's pretty interesting that the bonus is actually variable. Like, it, there, there are some factors that lead to a higher bonus and to a lower bonus. Actually quite interesting. But let's just talk about 88.2 million in bonus, which is like 8 million per team. And I don't know how many players are on each team, but I do not think that everyone gets a million, you know, and especially also because there are coaches and there's uh, also doctors probably in the team as well and security guards and whatnot. So there's definitely a lot of staff also on the team or in the team. So I guess, I don't know, of course, you know, even though if everyone gets 100k, it's it's definitely really a lot, you know, compared to just quote unquote normal people, quote unquote normal people that are just working, that are getting a salary, most often beneath those 100k, you know, because 100k, of course, is really a lot. You know, if you're earning 100k a year, then that's, uh, I think, definitely enough in most places. I don't know if this would actually be enough in New York since the real estate prices are so fucking high. But uh, I mean, like, in just 
pretty huge range of, of first of all countries and and also cities uh, states as well if you kind of think about that as well you're going to have a pretty nice life a pretty just maybe even wealthy life you know you're not gonna have to just save a lot i guess it's good you know earning 100k i think is pretty good i don't know no it's not the one percent of uh one percent earners To be among the top 1% of US earners, a family needs an income of $421,926. A new report from the Economic Policy Institute finds. However, the threshold varies significantly among states. It is actually as well a CNBC Make It article. However, the threshold varies significantly among states. In Connecticut, for example, you need an annual income of $700,000 to be in the 1%. In New Mexico, you need $255,429. Keep in mind that these numbers just present the threshold. The average income of the top 1% nationwide is $1.32 million. I guess it's per year. Assume, at least. The bottom 99% of the other hand earn an average of $50,107 per year per year i have to say 50k divided by let's say 12 let's talk about 12 it's still 4k and i have to say in my country so in austria earning 5k a year is really not bad it it really is not bad i would actually argue let's actually look it up um austria income in austria just the the problem there is as well that uh, we have to calculate that the euro is just a little bit higher in worth than the dollar is just a little tiny bit so in austria the average household net adjusted disposal income per capita is 33,541 us dollars a year just below than the oecd average of us d which is three uh, 33,604 so it's just like I know, 60 bucks, 70 bucks, somehow around that. But there is a considerable gap between the richest and poorest. The top 20% of the population earn about four times as much as the bottom 20%. It's, it's pretty interesting. Like, And as you can see there, I mean, like if they say, you know, if the, the CNBC Make It site says that that 50% is like just what the other 99% are earning, so which I would argue that it is kind of the, the average there, some sort of, not really, kinda, then uh, like compare that. Like we are earning 33,000 and this is actually, I would actually argue that this is even not that bad because 33 divided by 12 is, is still, yeah, nearly 3K. I mean like, yeah, I don't know, 8.9 million visitors per year, 18.9 million uh, renewable energy, 29.5, which is actually relatively low, I have to say. Uh, 72% of people aged 15 to 64 in Austria have a job, a paid job. I mean, like, you know, I'm in the other 28%. Yeah, 28%. But yeah, you know, let's actually move back to the original article. I hope that I can... Oh my fucking god, it's small. It's so small. Oh, I found it. I found it. Everything is good. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, The amount each team gets from the player's pool depends on how far they advance. The further they make it, the bigger the share they earn. Okay, I see. I see, I see. You know, of course, it does just really make sense that you're doing this just because, like, I don't know actually giving every team the kind of uh, just same amount basically to just uh, divide it by by 10 um is it 10 10 yeah i think it is 10 i think it it would not really be fair i guess last year the winning boston red sox team split the record 31.7 million the world series run up the los angeles dodgers split 21.2 million like you know something to be said there is that i guess like those teams that are really like not good they're not getting a lot of money you know or at least they're not getting a lot of bonus or a high amount of bonus or of that bonus but i mean like like actually actually, i want to see mlb team members is this something Uh, how many players are on mlb team there are two rosters for an mlb team a 25 man roster and a 40 man roster the main team that plays and goes to games is the 25 members so i let's it's actually divided by by 40 because i assume that's like yeah i assume that it might be just a little bit better we could also just take the average you know but let's see what uh what did they earn 33 was it 33 kind of no it's the wrong one good uh the the 31 31 divided by 40 like hmm it's it's still not a million like even though it's quite a lot like it's 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 well, okay you know it's still uh, 700k per per person and this is just really a lot it's too soon to tell how big the postseason pot will be this year but both the nationals and astros can affect 
can expect a hefty bonus. There is a breakdown of the percentage of the pool that goes to each team. The World Series champion is getting 36%. The World Series runner-up is getting 24%. A League Championship Series runners-up, the second, I guess, uh, is getting 24%. Uh, oh, it's two teams, so they each get 12%, which includes or which adds up to 24% for uh, both of them. Then Division Series runners-up, which are four, they get 30% and or 3.2% each. And the wild card game runners-up, two, two teams actually, these are 1.5% each. I mean, like, even though I'm really, really, really not dedicated in the whole MLB thing, you know, I, I have actually once watched baseball the only time, like, I played bo baseball in school and on the Wii, <laughs> I've never actually watched a game, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I never watched a game. Once the money has been divided out to each club, it is about to the players to decide who gets a share of their team's winnings. Each year, as stipulated in the basics agreement between the players union and major league baseball teams teams headed to the postseason hold a meeting to distribute shares the new york times reports the money is designated in 25 full shares but the players may divide the shares to include those who played during the year but were not on a playoff roster as well as coaches trainers and strength coaches plus other uh, non-uniformed personnel like clubhouse attendants, chefs, public relationships, public relations staff, security guards, bus drivers, and grounds crew members, percent set in 1993 can be awarded some of the cash. Okay. In 2018, the Red Sox split the, their winnings into 66 full shares worth 400k. Each around 400k, not exactly. Each uh, 10,025 partial shares and eight cash awards. The MLB announced last year the Dodgers chose to split their winnings into 60, 67 full shares worth 200k or actually 300k around each 13.29 partial shares and 24 cash awards. I mean like of course you know there's a lot of money in the system you know also there you know and I think it's actually the case for every sport isn't it you know but but yeah I mean it's, it's, it's really quite some money. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm actually gonna end the episode there, you know. I could also go through some news right now. I could also just talk about some Quora questions, but I could also just end the episode there, you know, just maybe try out what it is like not recording for just such a uh, longer period of time, I guess, at least, or something like that. I don't fucking know. <laughs> but yeah, with that being said, I wish you the best health of happiness and also success, and I also hope that you're going to remind yourself on you're gonna be remembered. You know, which basically means your legacy because we can totally stimulate that because we can just be nice people and then being remembered as nice people. This is definitely something that we all can do and maybe even something that's suggestible to do. But yeah, um, three other questions that I hope that you're going to ask yourself are why are you here, what are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most? Those three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea since a lot of companies started out with solving something that really pissed them off. At least, you know, the founders started a company and this company is basically solving something or fixing something that really pissed those founders off. But yeah, um, please subscribe to the podcast and also please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've liked the episode um, so that I can see you the next time, which I'm hopefully also going to do. I'll see you.